accountable. But now they become wage slaves, meaning they have mortgages to pay, children to feed. And so they basically say what they want, the, what the editors want them to say. When I made the original Blood Diamonds documentary, I had a problem with the way the BBC presented that story. The BBC said to me, don't worry about it, Ishmael, there'll be more work for you. It's a fantastic story. I said, unfortunately, I'm not happy with the director of the story, and I took them to a tribunal. Then I was threatened, said I would be blacklisted. I was then blacklisted from the BBC for putting up a challenge to the way that they told the story. I am saying ethics and morality is lost in journalism. And if we had more ethics in journalistic reporting and integrity, perhaps we would not have had the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. So I'm saying that we need to all begin to take personal responsibility for what we believe and what we ingest. Don't believe me. Don't just say, oh, I heard him say that. Go out and research things for yourself. Most of the information you need nowadays is available on the net. We live in the age of an information revolution, but most of us are not taking advantage of that. We have all of these social networking sites. We have YouTube, Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, all of these social networking sites which we can use in order to expand the global thinking about humanity and justice. But what do we use these social networking sites for? We go on Facebook and we post, hello, I have just had a hot chocolate, send. <laughs> and then 10 motherfuckers come back, I like that. <laughs> and then another motherfucker comes back and says, hey, how many sugars did you have? Send. And that's the bullshit we're talking about. I'm saying, yes, you can talk about that, but let's also try and educate ourselves so we take personal responsibility about what's happening in the world. This is not about black versus white, Muslim versus Jew or Christian, right versus left, conservative versus liberal. This is about justice versus injustice. It's a very simple cause. We all have and share similar values. It's not alien to Muslims or Christians or Jews or Buddhists or Hindus to want the best for their children, to want security for their family, to want to be able to provide, to be able to live in freedom. Those are common values. But if we are to spread a revolution, let's not spread this revolution by joining one organization or another, because these organizations eventually become corrupt. I'm saying free yourself. Recognize who you are. Question what you believe. I'm not saying you shouldn't be a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim. And you've heard me trying to be funny. We talk about religion and we mock it in some stages. But if you are a Muslim, understand Islam, be a good Muslim. If you are a Christian, understand Christianity, be a good Christian. If you are a Jew, understand Judaism, be a good Jew. I have met good Jews. I have met so many Jews who have been welcoming, taking me into their homes, who I have as personal friends. I likewise, I've met good Muslims and good Christians. Why not we try and create a new philosophical revolution whereby we save ourselves and when we become good human beings, we should recognize it's not us, our job to judge. People have the right to choose for themselves. I have got nothing against you if you're a homosexual. In fact, that's your right to choose. And for those of you who are against homosexuals, who are heterosexual men, think about it. In fact, what it means is, if there are more homosexuals, it's less competition for you. <laughs> it just depends on how you frame your argument. But either way, either way, we can all coexist together. Before I leave, I'd like to state that we're filmmakers. As I said, I made the original Blood Diamonds documentary. I've made two documentaries in Cuba, documentaries in Uganda, in Jamaica, in Australia, looking at discrimination amongst the Aborigines. And this is our latest documentary called The Age of Extremes. Looking at whether it's propaganda or reality. Looking at how the, the establishment has deliberately targeted and alienated public opinion towards Islam to fight wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's a very, very interesting documentary. For those of you who can attend the documentary, please take a flyer. If you do intend to come, it's a documentary premiere, first time screening on Thursday. You'll also have Mozambegus in Guantanamo Bay as part of the Q&A. If you can make it, please come down. it would be nice to see you. But let's try and extend dialogue and debate. And the more you educate yourself, each one teaches one. That's where the revolution is. So you can be independent. 
You don't need an organization. You don't need somebody to say, I, you don't need to send 20 pounds to Oxfam every month to feel that you're doing something. What you can do is explore and investigate what's happening across the world and see how you can help. If you feel you want to support a charity, fine. I'm not trying to reduce that. But I'm saying there's a lot that we can do as individuals once we take personal responsibility. And I'm not saying become some left-wing activist that wears hush puppies and goes to the allotment on a Saturday. No! I'm saying live your life if you want to live your life. But let's have some level of social responsibility. Let's break down the prejudices. Don't look at me as some drug dealer because I'm wearing a gold tooth and have plaits in my hair and a gold chain. Let's not begin to judge people on the superficial. Let's begin to understand each other. There are people here from different nationalities from around the world. Look at this test. Where are you from, sir? Saudi Arabia. Where are you from, sir? Bangladesh. Where are you from, sir? Oh, you're from London. Where are you from? <laughs> Pakistan. So where are you from? Ethiopia. Where are you from? United States. United States. Where are you from, sir? Germany. Where are you from, sir? Ethiopia. Where are you from, sir? Sorry? South Africa. Where are you from, sir? Estonia. Estonia. Where are you from, sir? Yes. Africa. Look at the variety of people we have here. If we want to learn about the world, all we have to do is tap someone on the shoulder, you're in speaker's corner, engage in conversation, say hi, how are you doing? My name is and I'm from. What's it like in your country? And you greasy men, because half of you guys, when a woman approaches you, think, hmm. <laughs> please, hold it down and let's begin to exchange ideas. And if you have a mutual attraction, exchange numbers and fuck if you like. The choice is yours. But this is our latest documentary. For those of you who'd like to see it, please take a flight afterwards. And let me leave you with the wise words of Michael Jackson, a suspected pedophile. I believe he did it. But that's neither here nor there. I have no proof. But let me leave you with the wise words of Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson says, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. And if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change. If we want to change the world, don't change your neighbor, don't change someone else, change yourself, become a better human being, and that will have repercussions for the rest of the world. That's where the revolution is. Power to all people. Thank you very much.